uh, one of one of my favorite people, Bill McKibben, and Bill is going to be uh, is going to be introduced by another friend of ours, Bill Bradbury, our our uh, Secretary of State here in in Oregon, and uh, seven o'clock tonight at the Muddy Boot Organic Festival uh, here in Portland. He's also the author of Deep Economy: The Wealth of Communities and the Durable Future, and runs a website. Do you run that 350.org, or do you put I, it together, Bill? 350.org was my is our baby. It's uh, now the biggest global campaign on climate change. So by now, I can't really run it. It's in 15 languages. There's wow. people doing all, but it's it's what I spend my life on these days. So let's let's lay out the bottom line here. Why the number 350? 350, most important number in the world. Nobody knew it 18 months ago. You remember summer of 2007, Arctic ice started to melt way ahead of schedule, way ahead of when the you know, computer models said that global warming should really take it out. A bunch of other things started to go uh, askew about the same time, and again, all ahead of schedule. Glaciers melting fast, huge epic drought happening in many, many places, on and on and on. The scientists understood all of a sudden that we'd underestimated how fast climate change was going to happen. They went back to work. Jim Hansen, who you know, the NASA mm -hmm. scientist who's really our greatest climatologist, he and his team put out a paper in January of 08 saying, here's the bottom line. We finally understand the climate system well enough to say that any amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in excess of 350 parts per million is not compatible with the planet on which civilization developed or to which life on Earth is adapted, a fairly strong bottom line, especially strong because, Tom, we're already past it. We're at 390 parts per million now and rising. So the oh. point is, the point is, no longer think about climate change as something that's going to happen someday. Think about it as a very present emergency that requires much tougher political action and commitment than we've made so far, and that's what we're trying to build at 350.org in every country of the world except maybe North Korea. Well, and in fact, the, here, this, this story from uh, Live Science, just, just uh, Luis just handed me this, the dramatic changes sweeping the Arctic as a result of global warming aren't just confined to melting sea ice and polar bears. A new study finds that the forces of climate change which I, I refer to as atmospheric deterioration. Mm -hmm. I think we need to That's adopt good. language that is actually negative in its implications. Atmospheric deterioration are propagating throughout the frigid north, producing different effects in each ecosystem with the upshot that the face of the Arctic may be forever altered. And then they say, well, the Earth on average is warmed by about seven-tenths of a degree Fahrenheit over the past 150 years. The Arctic has warmed by two to three times that amount. It is uh, the, 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 the headline here in Environmental News Network, ENN.com, Arctic ecosystems changing may be irreversible. And this is all about getting us back down to 350, 350 parts per million. And, and in fact, Hansen, I, I quote that Hansen study. It, it had, had not yet been published when I was writing Threshold, but in my new book, Threshold, I, I, I still pulled it out and put it in because I figured it would pass peer review. And I attribute it to him, of course. And, and he's basically saying, you know, this is our lives. I mean, this is the future of our species and a whole lot of other species. And and Bill McKibben, I know the the uh, 350.org the website. I know the, the the newly elected prime minister of Japan mm. has broken with the old what what in Japan they call the Liberal Party. What we, here we would call the Conservative Party, uh, which had had controlled Japan for the last 50 years, who only wanted an 8% reduction in Japan's CO2 output. And he said, no, we're going to shoot for a 20% reduction. Um, this is pretty dramatic stuff. In Copenhagen, there's going to be this big meeting in December, people from all around the world, the big climate change conference. Uh, what are your thoughts about what's going to happen, and what can we do to push the United States, and particularly this administration, in the direction of doing the right thing? Uh, those are just the right questions, Tom. Uh, Copenhagen's going to be the big enchilada, the real point where we either fish or cut bait as regards climate. And around the world, governments are beginning to sort of stake out their positions we need far more from everybody and we're beginning to get it and the reason that we're going to begin to get it and that we're going to get more progress in the next couple of months is because we finally built a movement on October 24th here's how people can really take part on October 24th we're going to be having thousands and thousands and thousands of demonstrations and rallies and events all over the world in almost every country on earth on that day, all designed to take those three digits, 350, and drive them 
into the public imagination, to take this data point and make it clear that this represents survival for the planet. And if we do that, if we build that movement, you know, we're not going to beat ExxonMobil by spending more money. Than, I mean, you know, they have more money than have, we're ever going to have. A, a virtually infinite supply. They made more money last year than any company in the history of money. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So All the way that's back to not the Roman our, Empire. That's not how we're going to beat them. If we're going to beat them, it's going to be if we manage to build a movement. And finally, we are. I, the last week, I have been spewing carbon behind me. In the last eight days, I've been in Norway, South Africa, Israel, Palestine, and Mexico. I got to Portland late last night. Um, all around the world, this movement is finally building and building big. October 24th is going to be the most widespread day of environmental activism everywhere. No matter where people are listening to this today, there's something going on within a few miles of their home, and we need them to go out and be a part of it to really make some noise. You're going to have to spend a little carbon to stop the carbon, I guess, I'm a, unfortunately. I've, I'm a carbon, I'm afraid I'm a global warming machine this year. Next year I'm going home to Vermont and holing up and never leaving again. Yeah. Well, in a, in a good cause. I'm, you know, I've bought carbon offsets, although I know that that's very controversial. And, and But, but let's, let's not digress into that. 350 is the number we're talking with Bill Kibben. 350.org is the website, and it means 350 parts per million of carbon dioxide. We're now at 390. I thought we were at 385, Bill. It's going up two parts per million a year. You, you know, you Whoa. can't, you can't, Avert your gaze for even a minute. <laughs> I, I know. I, yeah, I guess I got distracted for a year right. or two. I, you know, it's right. 390. That's incredible. Right. And and what this means is that anytime we're above 350, we are putting ourselves, if you want to put the most selfish spin on it possible, and every other, you know, at least highly developed form of life. And well, not even. The, I mean, you know, corals are bleaching. Out. Oh, look, that we've changed. We've in the last 15, 20 years, the ocean has grown 30% more acid. The smallest marine organisms at the bottom of the food chain are now having trouble forming their shells. Right. So There's the krill, uh, the stuff that whales live on. Exactly. And the stuff that little tiny fish live on. Coral, all those things are affected. But the, the point, you get the point of the number just right. In essence, it's like all of a sudden we've gone to the doctor and the doctor is not saying, oh, Someday, if you keep eating donuts, you know, 10 times a day, your cholesterol will be too high. The doctor is saying, look, dude, you are in the zone. You're going to mm -hmm. have the heart attack. Get it down right now. We're already having the heart attack. When the Arctic yeah. melts, okay, that's a bad sign. This is one of the biggest physical features on the planet. It's been stable for millions of years. It's not good when all of a sudden it's open water. We've got to take action now and fast and hard. So... Action and by the way, I I think one of the most brilliant parts of this bill, and, and I love hearing you talk like this, is and I I've been saying this basically since the election of President Obama and the Democrats took over, is that there is a difference between a movement and a party, and a lot of people don't know that they don't they don't realize that distinction, and we can't rely on a party to basically do anything. We right. have to we have to be building movements in all these different areas in the environmental area in the public health area and you know That's fill in right. the blanks. Well, let's say and, Obama wants to do let's let's grant that he wants to do the right thing. We've got to give him the political room to maneuver. Right, and that means having a movement. Exactly right. There's no shortcut around it. Yeah, and so we, you're building a movement. What can and, and and you know a couple of weeks ago on this program uh, we got into a rather depressing. Uh, hour where I was going through, you know, if all of us moved to uh, carbon uh, fluorescent light bulbs in our yeah. homes, you know, we would have like what about a yeah. ten percent impact. It would, you know, the the biggest spewers of pollution in the United States are not you and me, uh, or even you and me flying around. It's industry and the military. I mean, we've got we've got some really serious systemic problems in this country and around the world. How do we take that on? What do we here's, do? Here's what if Copenhagen goes well. Here's what'll happen. We'll get an agreement that respects the science and puts a cap on carbon. And the effect will be, finally, that carbon has to pay a price for the damage it does in the environment. The minute that that happens, the minute that it's no longer just free to spew the most dangerous gas in the world out into the atmosphere, that's the moment when everything starts to change. That's the moment when industrial agriculture on the scale we do it no longer makes sense. That's the moment at which you know, we finally and forever see sort of driving semi-military vehicles to the grocery store. Right. That's the moment when government and human beings begin to make real and powerful change. 
A little bit of good news in the front page of today's Financial Times. Nicolas Sarkozy, the French president, has said, I will not accept a system that imports products from countries that don't respect the rules in carbon emission reduction. We need to impose a carbon tax at Europe's borders. I will lead that battle. He's, he's you know, because right now, much of our carbon production in the United States has actually been offshore to China. Yep. He's saying, we're going we're gonna to charge for that carbon. If you want to make something in a country where they're running coal-fired fire, power plants like China, we will charge for that. It's tariffs. It's really hard, of course, because most of the global warming that's going on now on the planet is caused by uh, coal that, and oil that we burned in the West over the last hundred years. Yeah. It's not yet China causing most of the problem, and they're still poor, and we're going to need to make a deal that looks something like the Marshall Plan at the end of the Second World War, but in carbon terms, where we provide some aid and assistance to allow them to develop without that coal. It's practical, it's idealistic, but most of all, it's scientifically required. Bill McKibben, you can check out his website, 350.org, and uh, also the author of uh, numerous books. The most recent one I've lost. Oh, here it is, Deep Economy, The Wealth of Communities and the Durable Future. And uh, you know, check out Bill's writings. But get over to 350.org. Bill, thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much, brother. Good fun. We'll be right back.